Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be talking more about how to develop your loose painting technique. And I'll be looking at a few questions that have been asked recently by artists who are struggling to get to this technique and, and when they do, how to stop themselves from falling back into old habits. Let's have a closer look. Now many of you are trying to loosen up your painting style to get a more impressionist look or just to break away from that tight impression where it looks like everything's been stuck onto the canvas. Now I've been asked recently by an artist if I have any tips on how to get that loose style except for repeating the same thing about brush size and using more paint. Now I thought about this for a while and I realized that maybe this particular artist had been trying these two tips out and then inevitably reverting back to the old habits. So I asked the artist about this and he came back and admitted that he was picking up the small brush and falling back into that pattern of painting. Now another artist wrote back to me as well on YouTube and said that she starts off the painting and it looks really great. It's nice and loose and it's fresh and vibrant. And then the habits kick in again and it's that pursuit of maybe perfection or just something else. Now I do have my views on this and it might not apply to everyone of course this is a very personal type of thing. Now I believe that it's more than just trying to be a perfectionist. It actually comes down to a mental programming. One that is really based in fear. Now you may say well, I'm just exaggerating but really it does come down to the fear of presenting a finished work that is not going to be appreciated by people that are important to you could be your family, your partner, your friend, whatever. It means that they may not understand your work and say to you, well that's nice but it's not finished or I'm not so sure. It doesn't really work for me. Um, that doesn't look like that. It should look like this and on and on. Responses like that are things that a lot of us actually fear. Um, we get better with dealing with it with time and eventually you'll get to a point where it doesn't matter. But if it's someone important to you, their opinion does count. Is the tightening up of the painting a way to prevent that type of response? The type of response that really gets to you personally and is upsetting or just chips away at your confidence. Because believe me, it does take confidence to make progress in your painting. Positive reinforcement is important. And a lot of people who don't paint don't understand that getting to a point in your painting is in fact a journey. Ups and downs, but it takes time and a lot of practice. It's not a switch that you can just flick and instantly you've created an impressionist masterpiece. Or hey, today I'm going to do a realist painting and I'm going to do a portrait and the portrait is a perfect realistic image of, of the, the person. Or you know what, today I'm, I'm just going to do some trees and do a landscape with lots of trees in and I'm going to do it like Claude Monet and flick of the switch, there it is. It's not that simple. It is a case of adjusting your mental approach to the painting. Without that approach and resetting of your thoughts and ideas and how you deal with potential failure and fear of somebody calling you out on that, how you deal with that mental aspect is critical to how you handle your technique. 
the two go side by side, you will not be able to adjust your painting style and build on it if you still fear that it is going to fail and make you look bad. So I'm going to play around with a, a big brush and just emphasize the technique I'm talking about. You can apply that as well provided you are able to resist and also resist the fear of not making a perfect painting. All right, does that make sense? Well, let's play around with some paint and a big brush and see what happens. I'm going to use this reference because it's really packed with details. So, we first compose it, but no pencil. We're going to use no drawing. Just get straight in with this big, long, flat brush. This is a size 8. And the format I'm painting on is very small. About a 6 by 8, but could even be slightly smaller. Mixing paint with the brush and getting in a nice mix of color that has variety in it. Not over mixing it. And then just choose a place to start. Put in the first big shape and work yourself logically throughout the painting. Just observe your subject really closely. Most artists paint almost unconsciously. They just glance at the subject and then just dab away at the canvas and hope for the best. I want you to spend your time looking at the subject Spend more time observing than actual painting and then you will get a much more accurate and remember clean that brush off. That's very important. So you're going to get a much more accurate painting by just observing. Like this blue here is a little darker than the blue above. I'm talking about the sea now, not the sky. The sky, of course, it's much lighter and warmer. Now into that sky, and I'm just cutting in there, getting it placed more or less correctly, using a little bit of yellow in the white and blue to make that sky cut in. Big shapes, big strokes, big brush marks. That's what you're after. And there we go. Now I've got a size 12 to get in the flowers. Now this is a really large brush on such a small surface. But you know what? This is an exercise to help train your muscle memory and build your confidence with a big brush. So let's go for it. Big juicy brush marks. Dirty brush, clean it off with tissue and you get a clean color note. Now there will be a little bit of mixing here and there and, it, and a confused edge maybe. That's no problem. If it's serious, go over it. If not, leave it alone. The idea is to keep moving. Get into motion with the brush and put down the paint strokes. Look at these steps and the, the wall packed with little details. But am I going to paint them? Absolutely not. All I want to suggest is a path or steps going down. And if I can do that, then I've achieved what I need to do. Bit of burnt sienna bit of ultramarine or a bit of white, whatever, that's all you need. Mix the color, value and temperature approximately correct and put it down. Highlights on the greenery, tons of tiny little leaves, just put a big mark down, that's all you need. Absolutely no little brush allowed in this exercise. The number 8 and the number 12 
is all I'm going to use by using the edge of the brush or the corners or the flat surface I can get vastly different shapes varying the pressure of the brush gets me different shapes again place the color on top of the other color and move the brush away and then you won't muddy up colors yeah I'm using reds and greens together and all remain vibrant just by putting down that clean color note and lifting the brush away these highlights not worried about the detail I just want to suggest them warm this up in the foreground lots of texture and it comes forward the branches just get the main ones now this is no more than a sketch but by the end of it I want to get a nice and vibrant loose looking sketch of this scene one that if you stand across the room and look at it it will make sense and look really interesting maybe another day you'll get out the large canvas and do a larger version but this one is giving you the confidence to paint big shapes I oh, know for some artists this is a very very tough exercise and it's almost like they got to hold themselves down from grabbing the small brush but just do it do it for me and then do it for yourself just just get it done and you won't regret it practice this quite often do one of these a week if you can and that's it it was really fun quick and effective well I hope retouching on this topic of big brushes and lots of paint and the size of the painting and the mental aspect to it I hope that sort of now comes together a bit more and that you can recognize and be aware of what's going on once you have that awareness progress can happen quickly and you won't fall into that trap or if you see yourself heading for it you can stop and remind yourself hang on this is a process let me stop here put this painting aside start another one and then map this progress have fun with it you know what the results are going to be don't worry about anyone else they will come onto your side soon enough well i hope that helps and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet come on now's the time make sure that you are notified of your next video by just hitting that notification bell and if you can give this video a like that would really help me and help others looking for similar videos as well okay don't forget you got your free course up here and a lot more on my website. Well, I'll see you in the next video soon. Until then, cheers for now.